you ever gotten a text from a friend which challenged you to respond in a new way? Well, that's what happened to me a few months ago. My friend texted me to ask, should I get the COVID vaccine? Now, I'm a professor of neurology and pediatrics and a health researcher at Vanderbilt Medical Center. And as a doctor, while my first instinct was to launch into why we all needed to get the vaccine to protect ourselves and our communities, I struggled with whether that well-rehearsed pitch was the right one to help my friend make this important personal decision. As someone deeply committed to communicating science to the public, which includes talking to our friends, I decided to try something different, to approach my friend in a new way. I gave her a call. I said, hey, I'm curious. What are your worries about the vaccine? I expected her to talk to me about her fears of a reaction to the vaccine, like fever or chills, or worries about unknown long-term side effects. I was prepared that she might say that the vaccine could change her DNA, her genetic makeup. I was surprised by her response. My friend said that the vaccine was a political football. She said, half of my friends tell me I need to get the vaccine to protect my community, while the other half of my friends say that natural immunity from COVID is far more protective and much less risky than getting vaccinated, and that vaccination is an infringement on my liberty. She went on to say, I'm an independent politically but I am so jarred by the crossfire between my friends that I've avoided getting vaccinated. Which responses went through my head? One, I need to tell her she is crazy not to take the shot. Millions of people have gotten vaccinated and research has proven that the vaccine is safe and effective. Two, I need to tell her to do her part and get the vaccine for the greater good. Three, ooh, I'm keeping my mouth shut on this one. It's way too political for me to get involved in. I will probably ruin our friendship for life if I say something. Now, these days, it may not surprise you that most Americans would pick response number three, keep your mouth shut. Which way did I go? Well, because one of my eclectic hobbies is to seek out challenging conversations, I didn't pick any of these responses. I went in a completely different way. But before I tell you how I responded to my friend, I'd like to share another story about a different vaccine. Back in 2014, public health researchers were trying to get parents to vaccinate their kids against the measles. And they put together a series of images and messages, including sick kids who had measles, and even a dramatic narrative of an infant who almost died of measles, to show parents what could happen if their kids did not get vaccinated and actually got measles. Which of these images or messages do you think increased parents' desire to vaccinate their kids? None of them. 
They had messages as well refuting the false claim that vaccines caused autism. And what was fascinating is that not only did parents feel less confident about vaccinating their kids after seeing these images, some parents even felt that vaccines caused autism. That belief was strengthened. This story talks about how when communicating science, facts are not enough. There's an art to science communication. Back to my friend. After hearing about her being in the political crossfire, I asked her a question. You're an independent, right? Does that mean you're an independent thinker? She nodded. She told me how important it was for her to make up her own mind, to weigh the pros and the cons of getting vaccinated. And I suggested that she do some research and think really carefully about whether she wanted to get vaccinated or not. I asked if I could send her some articles to get her started. She nodded again. Several weeks later, I was elated when my friend texted me to say she'd taken the vaccine and was recommending it to others. But I was particularly heartened that I could turn off those voices in my head, telling me to focus only on the facts and instead have a genuine conversation with my friend in which I listened deeply and really tried to hear where she was coming from. This approach, this relational style to science communication, the art of communicating science, is listening to somebody with empathy and curiosity rather than pouncing on them with the latest facts and statistics. It's as important as the facts. Walt Whitman once wrote, be curious, not judgmental. I would paraphrase Whitman to say, get curious, not furious. This is not a new idea. The Greek philosopher Aristotle wrote about logos, ethos, and pathos. Logos are your facts. But if you focus only on the facts, you can end up with the boomerang effect, where your facts have the opposite effect of what you intended. Similar to that vaccines and measles study I told you about. Ethos is your credibility as a speaker. Not just your credentials, but how trustworthy you appear. And pathos, that's your emotional connection to your audience. Through listening deeply, through being curious, through allowing your audience to be heard. 2,500 years after Aristotle, we're recognizing the importance of combining ethos and pathos with logos. And I would add a fourth element that of affirming your audience as independent thinkers and respecting their autonomy. Whether you're talking about COVID or climate change or any other contentious issue facing our world, think about how you can bring your audience into the conversation. In summary, wherever you are and what Whatever role you play in your community, whether you're talking to your Aunt Susan or your Uncle Steve, how can we all get better at communicating science to the public? Well, rather than telling people what they should do, what we think is best for them, and figuring out the best messaging, Instead, 
draw them into the dialogue. Connect with them emotionally. Respect their autonomy. Get curious, not furious. This approach may also be a way forward toward healing our deep divisions as Americans by inviting us to find common ground as we tackle our nation's challenges together. An emphasis on public engagement lies at the heart and the art of communicating science. Thank you.